It's golden hour and I may have waited too late to film this video, but I'm already here. So I'm at a park right now and I don't know if you can hear it, but there's ice cream man uh, outside and probably children in the background. So just ignore them. Anyway, how was your day today? Oh, that's good. So I've been getting a lot of comments recently saying like, uh, I love your videos. I'm about to start my car life journey and I'm going to be hitting the road or your videos have been very helpful because I'm about to move into my car or do a necessity, whatever. Basically, a lot of people who are about to start their journey have been watching my videos, which is wonderful. And I thought, why don't I share my knowledge of being a beginner in car life with you so that, you know, you can use it. So I'm gonna list out for you five things that you should know for beginning car life. Number one, you have to have a good bed setup. Sleep affects so many aspects of our lives, mentally, physically, emotionally. Basically, if you're getting bad sleep, you're gonna have a bad life. So I've seen some people who live in their car, they just kind of curl up in the back seat and I'm like, how? I think that that would be very uncomfortable as a full grown adult, but to each his own. All that I would suggest is that you have a comfy bed setup. Now, I'm not talking about Serta mattress, zero gravity comes to remote control bed setup, but you know, be able to spread your legs out and at least roll over. I think that that's a good place to start. I would suggest either you do what I did and take your seats out of your car, or if you can't do that, um, get a car with seats that can be folded down and put some type of platform over that and just sleep like that. Even if it's just, you know, a sleeping mat and a sleeping bag, that is way better than sleeping in, I think, your front seat or your back seat all balled up. I just can't imagine that that's going to work long term. If you don't have a good sleeping setup, you're going to be over car life in a hurry. Like first night, you're going to be like, I'm never doing this again. And don't let that be what prevents you from living in your car make sure it's something substantial like somebody tried to break in you know don't give up easy the second piece of advice that i would give you is to have something to cover your windows now there are many people who just raw dog the outside light looks looky loose i don't know how you do that i am anxious sometimes sleeping in places even with my window covers so without yeah, literally couldn't imagine that. When I first started, I just ordered a roll of Reflectix off of Amazon and then I traced my windows and I cut them to fit and I glued some black felt on and bam, I stuck them in my windows. There are tons of tutorials on this on YouTube that you can look up. And then it just became kind of an inconvenience to store them and stuff. So I upgraded to WeatherTech Reflectix and they come all convenient like this. And I'm really happy. It is an investment though. I, they were over a hundred dollars. I think yeah, they're like 120, 150, something like that. But if you're actually going to be living in your car full time, there are certain things that you want to invest in that are just going to make your life easier. And custom made window covers are one of those things. You just need something to cover your windows. I don't think that you should just, even if you have really dark tint, I wouldn't sleep with no nothing covering your windows because number one it's illegal to sleep in your car in most places and number two i just yeah i don't think you'd re you really don't want people just be looking in your car seeing you asleep i don't know how that wouldn't disturb your peace but anyway some people do it okay to each his own whatever i would not suggest you do that i suggest that you get something to cover your windows number three power you have to get something to power your devices while living in your car. We are in the 21st century. Everyone has electronics. You probably have multiple electronics. Charging your electronics with a USB cord while you're driving isn't gonna cut it. Trust me, I tried this. My first ever car camping trip, I charged my phone, I parked, I was gonna camp for a few days. The second night, my phone was dead. I was like, oh shit, what do I do now? And you know what I did? I had to take a drive just to charge my phone and it was really annoying. So. As you all know, I have my beautiful little I use my Jackery 160. And it works really well. It's the smallest one. So it really doesn't take that much to charge it. If I drive like an hour 
is pretty good to go. And I don't have a solar panel, but I heard that the smallest solar panel will charge it up pretty fast. So that's an option for you too. But yeah, um, living in a car, it's super small. It's like three pounds and it fits pretty much everywhere. It has uh, two USB ports and then one three prong regular outlet thingy. I don't know what those are called. Anyway, it powers everything that I need for a really long time before I have to charge it. So I would suggest something like that. But um, I suppose you could also do those small little phone power banks that you use a USB cord for. If you're just going to be using your phone, I guess that's fine. But I think that that's really inconvenient and long term is not really going to work, especially if you want to power larger devices. So I would suggest something like either a small Jackery. I think Goal Zero makes a small one too. Some type of power bank to power your devices. Number four, I suggest that you get a gym membership not to work out i mean if you want to work out that's fine actually that's good you should work out if you live in your car going to the gym is probably gonna do loads for your sanity i don't do that but you guys should do as i say not as i do i suggest getting a gym membership because showers since we're in a panoramic i'm not sure how the gym membership shower thing is working out for people last summer i tried to get a gym membership and i got one because the gyms were open but then I went to take a shower and the showers were closed and I was really upset about just spending $20 at Planet Fitness for a membership when I couldn't use the showers. That's the only reason why I got the membership. Another good thing that comes with a gym membership is Wi-Fi. So you can uh, work on your computer or just browse the web, game, whatever, from the parking lot. And that's another perk of a gym membership. Look at all these perks. The uh, pizzeria situation. Planet Fitness and 24 Hour Fitness, all that. They were 24 hours. You could park in their parking lots and just sleep there. So you had a place to shower, a place to use Wi Fi, and you could sleep there for the night. This is like golden ticket of car living. Again, I'm not sure what the situation is right now. I would suggest long term car living, get a gym membership. Number five, last but not least, you have to find places to sleep. Safe spaces to sleep, I might add. So if you're going to be traveling, kind of like I do, I suggest that you always find your parking spots to sleep in before you get to your destination. There are adventurous souls out there who drive around all day and then just find a random place to sleep, and that's great. But I think that this is something for me personally that leads to a lot of stress and anxiety. And you want to try to avoid that usually in life, so just pre-plan your spots. I use iOverlander not only do I find spots that way, but then I can read reviews on the spots and see, you know, what's up with the location. Like, is it safe? Is, are there bathrooms? Stuff like that is really important. And it really gives you peace of mind knowing that you're going to a spot that has all the amenities that you will need. If you're going to be living in your car and staying in one town or city, then I suggest you have at least three decent sleeping spots, but I would say more like five and rotate those regularly. I do not at all recommend ever sleeping in a spot longer than honestly a day. If you have to do two days, okay, but no more than that. Just because you don't want somebody to drive by and be like, oh, that car was there last night. It's just better for your safety. And again, sleeping in your car is illegal. So keep a low profile, arrive late, leave early that kind of thing. Have your parking spots planned out in advance. That should honestly take most of the stress out of living in a car. Make it easy on yourself. Plan spaces to park at. And I kind of mentioned this earlier and here's just like a little bonus add-on. Definitely make sure wherever you're parked at has a bathroom that you can use in the morning. This is a rookie mistake that I made when I was just starting to car live but I parked at a random street in San Francisco, woke up, had to pee so bad and I could not find a bathroom. That was scary and painful my bladder was bursting um plan that out find a bathroom find somewhere safe and you'll be good to go so that's five pieces of advice that i have for beginner newbie car livers i wish you all the luck on your journey it will be fine trust me it's a lot more scary than it seems in your head than it actually is in real life in real life you're big chilling and you get used to it way faster than you'd expect. You will be fine. I hope that you found this helpful. Subscribe for more car life tips. Subscribe to see me travel around and live in my car. Check out my Patreon and join my adventure club. Other than that, I will see all of you beautiful 
car angels next week. Bye guys. Wait, what is this video gonna be called? Beginner car life. What kind of thumbnail does beginner car life have? This is the beginning.